Summit has been a cornerstone event for the Melee community for many years now, so it should come as no surprise that BTS has decided to host a second Ultimate Summit this year. The stakes for this event are stacked to the brim with talent, and have been heightened even further this time as the results here will be counting for the Fall PGR rankings. And if you're looking for some extra help to climb the ladder in your local scene, check out ProGuides.com for on-demand coaching to get you prepared to compete at the next major. Our new Pro Pass grants you free passes to our Play With Pros platform along with a plethora of exclusive content all posted daily. Make sure you don't miss our new pro course with MK Leo himself, as well as others coming soon. But anyways, who exactly is going to be in attendance at Ultimate Summit 2? There are three categories of players who will be competing at Ultimate Summit. Auto-invited players, crowdfunded players, and qualified players. MK Leo and Tweak, the number one and number two ranked players on the latest PGR rankings, were the only two that were automatically invited to the event. Six players were then crowdfunded into the event for passing qualification requirements and then raising the most money during the hyper-competitive summit voting process. And the last nine slots were for qualifying players at a variety of events. Six of these slots were given out to the highest placing non-invitees at main stage, two were given out at the Big House 9, and a final one is still waiting to be claimed at Nightmare on Smashville. If you follow Competitive Ultimate in any capacity, you've got a pretty good idea of how MK Leo and Tweak's years have been going. And and we've talked at length on this channel about players like Zachary, DeBuzz, and Void who earned their way into the event, but the same can't be said for most of the crowdfunded players. So let's get to know Arfang, Armada, and Leffen's ultimate careers a little bit better so you can be a more informed viewer for Ultimate Summit 2. Let's start off by talking about Arfang, the Pichu main from South Carolina. Despite him being an honorable mention on the first PGR rankings, most people had no clue who he was, and some were even upset when he claimed one of the first Summit voting slots. But any clamoring that he didn't deserve it was quickly washed away by his 7th place run at the Big House 9 where he took sets from Wadi, Light, and Pandarian. He dropped his two sets of the tournament to Zachre, the eventual champion of the event, and Sam Sora, arguably the second best ultimate player in the world at the moment. All this tells us about Arfang is that he's good at the game, but we still really don't know much about the man behind the Pichu. So I reached out to Arfang on Twitter to ask him a few questions about his ultimate career and his background in Smash. Arfang got into competitive Smash through watching Melee around the time that Smash 4 was released. He slowly got more and more invested in the Smash 4 community and started playing the game itself more and more, eventually ingraining himself into the local scene. He played Mario, Cloud, Sheik, and Bayo across the game's life cycle. Arfang also made his debut on the South Carolina Smash 4 PR at number 1, which is a title he held up until the very last ranking where he fell a second behind Peepnut. When Ultimate was released, Arfang chose to explore new horizons with his main instead of sticking with any of the characters he dabbled with in Smash 4, and he eventually landed on playing Pichu due to how fast the character is and how absurd the character's punish game is. The newly minted mini Ratman had some quality placings across the events he was able to make it out to in the first PGR season, picking up wins over Mr. R, Elegant, Fatality, and Plup. His wins over Fatality and Plup even came after the huge Pichu nerfs that pushed many away from the character. Arfang's reason for staying true to Pichu actually had nothing to do with anything game-related. He was simply starting up college and didn't have the time to get a new character to his Pichu's level, so he chose to keep his focus on the baby Pokemon. He started to work Rob and Palutena into his repertoire for more annoying matchups, but Arfang looks to be keeping Pichu as his number one for the foreseeable future. As for Arfang's goals for Summit, he said he's looking to learn as much as he can, hopefully play well in bracket, and to overall let the Smash community know who he is as both a person and a player. It's obviously gonna be tough for the Pichu to make a deep run at the event, but it'll be exciting to see how far he can push himself and his character at Ultimate Summit 2. Next Next up, we have the Inkling main, Armada, who you're hopefully a bit more familiar with. Armada is hailed by most as the greatest melee player of all time and was ranked as the number one melee player in the world in 2015 and 2016. He's since retired from competing in melee singles and has instead turned his focus over to streaming and playing competitive ultimate. Unfortunately for Armada fans, his start in competitive ultimate has not been nearly as explosive as it was for him in melee. He's only got three large events under his belt since the game's release. The first was his 97th at Genesis 6, where he lost to Shadow PR, a Bayo and Palu dual main based out of Texas, and Pandarian. His second venture into competitive ultimate came at the first summit event, where he was invited instead of having to fight for his spot like he did this time. Here we saw shades of the player he has the potential to become, as he beat Zero and ZD at the 
event, but this still wasn't nearly enough to stir up the Alliance hype train or spur Armada to attend more Ultimate events. We then jump all the way to September for Armada's most recent event and the one that allowed him to qualify for voting by finishing 17th, Main Stage. And even with this high of a placing, Armada still left more to be desired from this performance as he picked up no really notable wins but lost to two top 50 players, Zach Ray and Salem. So Armada really hasn't been able to translate his melee success and prestige over to Ultimate quite yet. And with us coming up on the one year anniversary of the game's release, Armada fans may have to come to terms with the fact that Ultimate just isn't his game. But melee fans know that Armada should never be counted out despite the immensely unfavorable odds against him. So we'll have to wait and see until Summit if Armada has finally found his footing in Competitive Ultimate. And the last player we're going to highlight is Leffen, whose name and Twitter beefs probably sound more familiar to you than his tournament results. Leffen is the only esports athlete who can say they've been to Summit for three different games, Melee, Dragon Ball Fighters, and Ultimate. And unlike his fellow Swedish compatriot known mainly for their Melee prowess, Leffen's had pretty consistent attendance at Ultimate events since its release, even earning an honorable mention spot on the first PGR. But anyone who knows Leffen's personality knows that he won't settle for just an honorable mention. So how's his bid looking to make the rankings for this season? Well, for the year so far, he's got SmashCon, Shine, and Main Stage all under his belt. At SmashCon, he placed 17th, beating Salem in a legendary grudge match in brackets, as well as picking up an immensely more valuable win over Meister. His losses to Tweak and Blazing Pasta's Peach weren't too bad either, making the event an incredible start to his second PGR season. The Leffen hype died down slightly with his 33rd at Shine, but was not a bad performance by any means. Again, he took two respectable losses, this time to Leon's Bowser and Bestness, as well as winning a close Game 5 set against Area 51 member 8-Bitman. And most recently, Leffen added another 17th place finish to his resume at Main Stage. He did finally take his first loss that could potentially be considered bad to SoCal Joker Richter Main Nitro, but he helped make up for it during his 5-set losers run where he eliminated 41st rank ranked Puppe from the event. So just from those three events, I think most would say that Leffen probably doesn't need an incredible summit showing to have a top 50 spot reserved for him by the end of the year. But Leffen is still missing that hallmark huge upset win that many other players around his skill level have. So here during Leffen's second Ultimate Summit appearance, we'll get to see if he has the ability to hang with the top 10 like he does in Melee, or if he still needs to do a bit more research in Ultimate. And that about does it for this video, highlighting the resumes of the three least known Summit attendees. Let us know in the comments which of these three players you think is going to perform the best at Summit, as well as who you expect to claim that last slot at Nightmare on Smashville. Make sure to subscribe to Pro Guides and put those notifications on to make sure you don't miss out on any content on the competitive Ultimate scene in the future.